What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to the video, Cup of Kodo One. So, model complexity. My notes today. What was that? Model complexity. So, anybody who knows anything about ML will will see that this is um. <sighs> Not what I wanted to write. Not variable. It is bias variance trade off. And this is going to have to do with a lot of underfitting and overfitting and uh, algorithm selection and so forth. So, my notes on model complexity. So first off, what is a model? A model is simply um, a way that we're going to map anything from an input to an output. Uh, now, we do it every day. Um, you know, there might be a fire somewhere, and you know that that means do not get close. Because if you do, you're going to get burned. So that, that's a simple version of a model. Um, the computer that we're dealing with is taking a model. We have our input features, and then it's creating, it's going to map the algorithm that we're choosing so that we can get some kind of a target variable. So this is our algorithm that we're selecting here. We are feeding it this. We're hoping to get this back out uh, in a predictive manner if we're doing predictive or classification, that's what we're doing. But the computer is the one doing the mapping here. That's It's, it's getting us from the input to the target variable um, with the best level of success that we can get to. Uh, so for us, that is what the model is in, in machine learning. Now, machine learning is just one version of a way to build a model. There's many other ways to do it. Um, but of course, that's what this focus is. So it's just it's it's a mapping function between the input and the target. Uh, that's that's how I see it. Um, and the function is just going to be the relationship between the variables. Uh, that, that's that's exactly how we're going to roll it. And we're going to get some coding in the next video. We just have to lay out some a couple more basic premises. Um, what did I have next in my notes? I had ML machine learning in a nutshell, is just estimating. That mapping function based on the data that we that we feed it that, that you're going to find, um, but some of the some of the primary questions that you're going to have as you go through this incredible journey of machine learning, and you will have answers to all of these as we go. Um, but which algorithm to use? Now I saw just saw Kaggle came out with a really cool slide. I don't know how accurate it is because I don't I don't trust people to give their own. Uh, feedback, because um, people always try to inflate uh, what it is they, they know or what they used. But um, logistic regression was still the number one used algorithm for the Kaggle competitions. Uh, and you had ensemble methods, and you had decision trees, and you had you had neural networks, and I think they were 30-something percent. Um, I don't think that they're that representative, but still. So questions you're going to be asking yourself as you do ML is, which algorithm are you going to be using? Uh, two which settings are going to rock the house now something we're going to get into there's something called hyper whoops hyper parameter selection so think of this as uh for, in terms of settings that are going to rock the house what we're going to be using that, that that phrase what i mean imagine you had if this was your model a physical model and we had knobs all along it and each knob represented a different a different aspect, a different property of that algorithm, a different input, if you would. And what we're doing, we'll say this is our, you know, zero line. You can not only turn the knob up or down, slide it up or down, but you can also rotate the knob more or less. So you have even a two-dimensional different way of, of, of messing with parameters that are within your models. And we want to find which of these settings are going to rock the house, which of these settings are going to give us that perfect balance between over and under fitting. And this all ties in to model complexity. This is all a matter of this is all feeding into this aspect right here going from input mapping an input to a target variable. So so far which algorithm that we're going to use, when we have that algorithm, what settings are we going to use that are just going to rock this thing so that we're not over and we're not under fitting and we're getting the best results possible. Um, even something as simple as how or what features to use. 
So a lot of this is going to come down, if you speak to anybody who, who works in the field, this comes down to an art. It really is subjective to the type of problem you're even trying to solve. And then, of course, it does have an ob objective uh, nature to it as well, but um, a much, much, much larger subjective aspect to it. So now that we have some basic questions down, what I want you to know is that all of those answers that we're talking about, hyperparameters, which algorithm to choose, what features, all of that ties into model complexity. So a, a working definition, if you will, that we're going to use anytime you see MC, I'm talking about model complexity. It's a model's inherent flexibility to represent the dynamic multivariate relationship between input features and target variables. So what the hell does that mean? Essentially, again, we're going to start with input. We have targets. And everything in here is how flexible is this to represent the dynamic multivariate relationships going from here to here. There is a lot of crap that falls in between here in the algorithms. We only mentioned a few which algorithm to choose, how many features, which features to choose, which hyperparameters to mess with if we're doing neural nets, um, how to layer your ensemble methods, so on and so forth. All of these, and again, with one objective, I guess I should say that too, this all has one objective, to find a strict balance between over and underfitting. That is, that's the ultimate balance that all of this has is to simply strike that balance so that you're not overfitting and you're not underfitting, that you, you want to get you know extreme, extremely good, uh, reliable, reproductive accuracy rates um, while maximizing this balance between those two parameters. Machine um, model complexity is intimately tied, like I said, to barriers, variance, trade-off. And you'll see that. This is more of an intuition way of getting it. And you're going to see how we get to that bias, variance, trade-off um, a little, uh, as we get deeper into this, you'll see how the two are tied together. A practical thorn in the heel of real world machine learning is dealing with the noise in the signal. Uh, so imagine if you have an image here and you're trying to, um, since I can easily draw this, we'll make it a little bat because it is Halloween. You're trying to, you're trying to get the computer to see this bat that's here, right? What up? And you wanted to learn this structure for this this particular image. But there's all other stuff in here. There's a tree over here. And there might be, you know, the background of a house over here. And then there might be, you know, a car sitting in the driveway over here. You know, what up? So all of everything that is not what your desired output is, is considered noise. And that's like the Achilles heel, if you will, a real thorn in machine learning is dealing with that noise in the signal. How the hell do we get the computer to see the difference between what it is we want? Maybe I'll even make it a little easier. What it is we really want and kick out everything else that we don't want. Like, I don't care about all this. I don't want all of this. I don't want you to use this in your model. Because what happens is then when you're using, when we're getting into overfitting, the computer is not only learning what it is that we want to find as our input target variable, but it's also learning all this noise to know that we don't want it. So we get hyperinflated um, accuracies. And then you go to try to use this on real world, real world data and your model's looking for all of this in its performance and it's not going to find it because this is, you know, you take one image now, you rotate by one degree the camera and now the image is going to look already different from a computer standpoint. That's hugely different because remember the computer's breaking images down into pixels, which we'll see a lot of when we get into uh, computer vision. So the noise, it's the randomness of the data that we can't control. Uh, we're going to think natural variance of the petal size for the same flower. Uh, so if, if you have, if we have a flower, um, don't even give me crap about this drawing this one, but if we have this flower, one, two, three, four, five, I'm going to make them even five. Now these guys could be the same species of flower. Let's just for argument's sake, let's say it's the same species of flower. Let's say that these all have the same size ratios between these two, the, these two flowers that we have here, the two same size ratios. 
Same species in the iris data set, if that's what you're using. It could have been the same hair length or style for the same species of cat or the same financial markets, whatever. The point is, I want the computer to tell me that this is the same species, species number one, but there are there's so much variance, there's so much other little crap that doesn't matter in the images that we're using, our inputs that we're putting into the machine. And it's not easy to code what that noise is. It's not easy to have an algorithm to learn what that noise is because even we as humans learn that via experience and, and you learned it by living and we're trying to replicate that in a computer. And that's why what you're going to learn, remember we do supervised, unsupervised. When we get to reinforcement learning, that's when experience is now tar start starting to take a place within the algorithmic choice selection that you have. Um, even I know some guys are tuning into this because uh, they want to they make a crap load of money in the, in the stock market and the futures markets. And there's a lot of noise in this. So you have professional traders, half the um, high frequency trading that's out there is trying to do what's called like mean variance. So they're pretty much saying that, uh, you know, when you get these fluctuations up here, you're coming back to the mean. When you get down here, you're coming back to the mean. When you get up here, you're coming back to the mean. So that's what HFT, HFT is primarily a mean variance based trading system. So, but again, you have to have your model not deal with the noise because you can't constantly be taking trades because you'll get yourself wiped out in a hot second. So there, there, there's too much noise that's buried in the data. Um, and so that actually gives us our very first criteria for judging how good a model is. And that's going to be how well can the model uh, separate the noise from the signal. So if we, if we have our image and we're applying a model to this and there is, this is all noise... and this is our desired input, how well can this model surround just this? How well can the model pick up just this area and leave out all of this, leave out all the noise? That's gonna be a, a, one of our criteria for judging how good the model's gonna be. The signal that we're getting, that's the orange here is a signal for this example, that's the true relationship that we want to map between the input and the target variable. This is all we want being fed into this. Because then if we if this is all we have being fed into this and we can train on that, we can get insanely good accuracy for target variables. Insanely good. The problem though is because not only do we get this into our training, but it also does this and we get some of this and some of that and maybe even a portion over here. And that comes into the training also. And this is why we don't get it to be, that's why it's not as pretty and as perfect as we want it to be. So we want our model that can minimize this and maximize this. Easier said than done. Because again, the signal is the true relationship that we want to map between the input and the target variables. Different ML algorithms are they have different different ways to deal or estimate that signal to noise relationship. Uh, we also know that model complexity manifests as overfitting and underfitting. We're trying to strike that balance between the two of them, ideally. Uh, there's some terminology that we use in machine learning when we talk about how well a machine learning model learns, right? Because that's that's what we're that's ultimately what we're talking about, um, and it it can either generalize new data. Or we can be super specific, and we want we want to have models that can perform well with all new kinds of data inputs. Um, the problem is that the cause of poor performance in machine learning is either what am I going to say? Overfitting or underfitting. Well, actually, let's do this so we can actually put it all on one slide. Overfitting or underfitting. This is your number one reason for poor performance in machine learning. And someone, oh, the bad algorithm. Yeah, that just might mean that your algorithm really overfit or your algorithm really underfit. That's all it's going to mean. Uh, so again, it still comes down to the poor performance was caused by overfitting or underfitting. I'm not talking about the algorithm you selected. Overfitting, the way um, what I have in my notes for, at least for my brain, is the model learns the noise instead of the signal. So it learns the signal plus the noise is what I'm going to say. So signal and noise equals overfitting. So essentially the model has gotten too trained. It trained too well. It's too complex. It's way too damn specific. It's like a massive smart ass for a situation. 
Overfitting is going to refer to the model that models the trading data too well. It just it got way too specific, and then you try to apply it to other data sets, and it's going to fall to crap. Overfitting happens when a model learns the detail and the noise in the trading data to the extent that it now negatively impacts the performance of the model on new data. So you could have your training data, and you know, let's say you get like 97% accuracy for going from input to target variable. But then you take a new input, and you might go down to like, I'm not exaggerating, like 42% accuracy to your target variable. And you're going to be saying, what the hell, man? I was 97%, now I'm 42%. But that's because you overfit the hell out of it. Your, your model not only learned the signal on your training, but you made it so specific that it also learned all the noise. So then you were getting insanely good accuracy numbers. But then once you feed it a new model, your, 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 uh, your, your, your situation is you have your new model here, and here's your signal, and this thing's trying to come in, and it can find your signal, but then it's, it's also trying to then decipher between the noise. And before, remember, it learned all the noise, and now it didn't. So now it's just like, oh, what? This is all needs to come, and, and it just – then you get horrific, horrific numbers. So you can't be uh, – you can't train it to the extent that you get like a smart ass. You can't overfit the trading data. Uh, we don't want to make. We want to make sure that the noise and the random fluctuations in the trading data is not picked up and learned as a concept by the model. Um, again, even the way if you're driving down a road, you need to know about cars and the lights and and the other traffic. You can see that there's a building there, but you don't have to know what the hell's going on inside of it. You don't have to know what's happening at the windows per se. Um, you can see if there's cars on the road and they're parked or if they're moving or not or stationary. You don't have to know about the make and the model and the color. Your, your brain can filter out that noise and it can filter out those random fluctuations. And that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to create algorithms that can do that same kind of, of premise. Um, the problem is that these concepts, they don't always carry over into new data. And then we're going to have a negative impact on the model to generalize, which sucks. So that's, that's overfitting. We're training too well. The model is too complex. The model learned the noise instead of the signal. Or rather, it learned the signal and the noise. It just got way too specific. On the other hand, we have underfitting. Let me be a little bit consistent. Um, we'll go here. So now for underfitting, the model is not flexible enough to learn the signal. So essentially, the model is too simple. Our model is too simple. So the model is going to be too simple. It is, it's, it's not flexible enough to learn the data. So underfitting is going to refer to the model. It can't train, it can either, the, the model can't train the data. So it's, it, we're not even training well on the data. And we cannot generalize to new data. So an underfit machine learning model, it's not suitable model, and it's 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 obvious that it's going to have poor performance even on the training data. So at least on overfitting, you, you think you're going to do well. On underfitting, uh, you start with crap and you end with crap. I mean, it's just it's 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 way too simple. Um, you could have you could have your image, and let's let's uh, well let's let's say this is your noise, and let's say this is your signal, and your thing is. Uh, it's picking up this, this, that, and that. It's it's just, it's way too it's way too um, simplistic. It's way under trained. It can't even do the the basic premise of what it is you're trying to accomplish. Uh, now, so you're gonna sit and say, and again, this I'm gonna draw a line right down the middle here. What was the purpose of everything we're doing for model complexity? We're attempting to find this ultimate balance between overfitting and underfitting where we have a model that has very good training results from our input to a target variable. We have very good testing results on our input to a target variable. And then when we have a new data set come in, we still have very comparable accuracy results from input to training variable. We don't want to have a model that's super trained to the sense that it's fit too well to our training data that we get hyperinflated numbers. And we don't want an algorithm that we're underfitting or hyperparameters that we're underfitting that the model's so damn simple we can't even get good um, training data, let alone test data. And it's just going to suck no matter how you splice it. So there are two additional techniques that we can use to help us find a sweet spot in practice. Um, and what are we going to do to get over that? Uh, let me do this. Do, 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 do. The way we're going to get over that is, I think I can do this. I can do this. The first way we're going to get over that is something called resampling. 
methods. And the second way we're going to get over this is something called validation sets. So think of resampling methods and validation sets as two ways that are going to bring us back in closer to model complexity when we're trying to find that balance in between overfitting and underfitting. And as we go through all the projects, we're going to be constantly seeing how all of this ties together, how um, as, as, as simple as it is in regards to uh, machine learning, as simple as it is, I'm sorry, I thought I got rid of everything. Uh, I need to go boom, boom. So as simple as it is, we're just going input. model complexity essentially with our model and that's the algo with many other factors and then our target variable so everything we're trying to do to go from here to here you're going to see how our biggest heel is going to be over to underfitting and how we're going to be able to use two of our biggest techniques which are going to be resampling methods as one and the second is just going to be validation data sets and how we're going to use these to bring that balance back into our over to underfitting uh, ratio so we can have a better um, a better performance and better generalization models so when we have new training data this guy still performs fairly well to go from input over to target variable because again that's the ultimate goal to be able to go to here by maximizing our, our input by maximizing the collection of the signal and minimizing the collection of the noise that's going to be one of our primary premises on which algorithm we're even going to be using all right, it's going to be for today. Next video, we're actually going to start developing some intuition behind model complexity and using a mapping function to do a very simple mean, uh, mean variance so we can actually create a data set so we can start to apply some of these algos to see how they're actually affecting data and how we can graph them so we can have a visual representation of what it is we're doing.